just arrived in Ante Road. He can blacklist me, but he can't take Fiji out of my heart. To commit to genuine media freedom in West Papua. Paris suffers numerous gun and grenade attacks. Where well, freedom is made? To say what is unjust. I've been told not to worry about the devils. Can access to stop counting on a, on a mere whim. A loss of World Cup year would be, uh, would be a lovely gesture. The world is facing grim future. This is our history. Being asked to show their passports and journalist visas. So it's important for us to bring the true story. The Pacific Media Centre has provided uh, quite an impetus into research. Having the Pacific Media Centre here at AUT is key. A platform or a, an outlet for journalism students here at AUT. It just opened my eyes to a whole new region. An enormous hub of media research and media content. We look for the issues that aren't really being covered terribly well. I would explain the Pacific Media Centre as a go-to place. We publish quite a wide range of uh, media books as resources uh, for the region. It also acts as a sort of uh, resource for uh, media practitioners or journalists uh, in New Zealand to learn about the Asia Pacific. It's very important that we have organisations like the Pacific Media Centre around. Kia ora toto and warm Pacific greetings. My name is David Roby and I'm Professor of uh, Journalism Studies and also the Director of the Pacific Media Centre. The centre is quite unique uh, in that uh, it was actually founded as both a research uh, unit uh, and also a media producer. The uh, Pacific uh, Media Centre Online itself, which has a range of news and uh, current affairs um, resources, but then we also have an industry partnership, uh, Pacific Scoop, and we're also about to start a new one called Asia Pacific Report. We also do uh, research publications, we publish Pacific Journalism Review, um, publish quite a wide range of uh, media books as resources uh, for the region, um, plus we have um, internships, um, we uh, send uh, our um, students from out of the centre around the Pacific uh, and so also in the Asian region as well. Uh, we run a very good uh, monitoring service, the Pacific uh, Media Watch. My name is Alistair Carter, I'm the contributing editor to the Pacific Media Centre's Pacific Media Watch project. I came through the uh, AUT Communications Journalism Program and I think coming to the end um, of the course, uh, like any other student, I think you sort of worry about where you're going to go, where you're going to work afterwards. Well, I, I'm uh, from a multi pacific background and so I was naturally looking for somewhere that really uh, supported multi pacific in New Zealand and abroad, supported those views. Um, in a really sort of in-depth and in-depth way. The Pacific Media Watch project is something that comes under the Pacific Media Centre. It's a sort of special project. It's a watchdog that uh, sort of informs our audiences about media issues in the region, media developments. It was really to monitor particularly issues in Fiji initially, but also throughout the region about media freedom uh, and about human rights uh, uh, relating to uh, freedom of speech and freedom of information. Yeah, countries like or territories such as uh, yeah, West Papua no, no, no. where there are major uh, human rights um, issues uh, we've given quite a lot of uh, attention to um, providing information about uh, the developments there. Audiences I think really need to be aware of what is happening around them um, outside of New Zealand in the Pacific anyway especially because there's so much interest now from those bigger countries coming down and investing into the Pacific and they really need to know how it affects not only New Zealanders but also their neighbours. Most of the mainstream media doesn't really give um, the Pacific uh, due recognition in terms of the wide range of issues and topics. West, West Papua is one that we've probably covered uh, very, very strongly because we recognised very early on that this was one of the major stories of the region and yet was virtually ignored. We're trying to go beyond what sort of uh, 
you see on, on the six o'clock night news, we try and give, give depth to issues around the Asia Pacific region. Just for example, we've got uh, starting tonight uh, COP21 in Paris, you know, with 200 countries um, in, in the world focusing on the challenges uh, for uh, the world um, to confront um, at, at, at this time. And yet, what do we see? Our mainstream um, daily newspaper in New Zealand doesn't have a word on the front page. And then if you go to the uh, world section in the middle, there's no mention either. So we saw this as very much our mission, that we would be an independent um, news service um, and uh, complement sort of uh, mainstream media like Radio New Zealand International, which does an excellent job. So we would provide the stories, but also the opportunity for our students to actually take an interest in the region, in their region. My name is KP Liu, and I am an honors student in journalism at AUT University. I was selected along with another guy, Nicholas, to go to Fiji to do an internship for two weeks. I did one week with Republica magazine, and I did one week with Wansawara, which is the USP student publication. That was an amazing opportunity because we were there at a time that coincided with the PIDF, the third PIDF summit, which is the Pacific Islands Development Summit. And we got to really hear on an in-depth level what were the issues that climate change was causing for these countries that were being affected. I got the chance to travel to Fiji last year for the um, Fijian elections, the first democratic elections in eight years. Um, and I interned with the local media for, for two weeks. I also got the chance this year, 2015, to uh, travel to Samoa to cover the uh, Manu Samoa All Blacks game. Um, there was lots of other things happening as well, but that was sort of the main um, focus of the trip. Before this, I think climate change was quite a peripheral idea for me, but just being able to go there, being able to see this place and wrangle with the reality that because of the actions of human beings, this place might not be here in a couple of decades. It pushed me to want to go past parachute journalism. I think it's really easy to land in a new place and report what you see but not try to understand why, not try to understand the historical factors behind it, not try to understand the cultural factors behind it, why the people think like that, the, the way the people act like that. The important thing for me getting to do the, getting to travel to these places and, and work outside of New Zealand was that not only was I being part of sort of these historical moments in the Pacific, I was also really learning as I went. As a journalist, it's, uh, I think it's really important for students anyways to sort of get out of their, their comfort zone, go and work in places that they're not familiar with. It's so important in having an opportunity to have a voice and also to be reporting on the issues. Our, our, our students are really the voice of the future and, um, and they're facing a lot of the challenges that we're just simply talking about. I'm Jim Marbrook, I'm a lecturer in television and screen production at AUT and I'm also a researcher with the Pacific Media Centre. I approached David Roby when I first started working at AUT and I had a project in New Caledonia that I wanted some advice over. When we first started in 2007 we did have a small grant that we were able to assist several research projects and one of them was on Māori media up in uh, Northland uh, and another one was um, about um, providing a seed grant for a documentary, Cap Bocage, uh, on New Caledonia and this was a very groundbreaking uh, documentary. My project was one of the first projects to get a, an official grant from the Pacific Media Centre and that really, really helped set the project up. Cabocage is the story of an environmental crisis. What happened in 2008 is that um, there was a landslide in a nickel mine on the east coast of New Caledonia. About 20,000 tonnes of toxic sludge uh, was spilt onto, onto a reef near some traditional fishing grounds. It's the story of what the tribal elders and the locals did to clean up that site. And it focuses on a, 
a young activist called Florent Urusuke, and he's the main character. In this case, the Pacific Media Centre in Cap Bocage was a, was a match made in heaven. So we were uh, very fortunate to be able to uh, help Jim uh, get going on this. And this is, I think, one of the most important documentaries that's come out of the Pacific in, in recent years. Environmental issues are key issues that we need to think about, not only in the Pacific, but worldwide. And also New Caledonia is very underreported and, uh, and misunderstood in a way. So it was building a bridge, following a good character, and um, talking about real issues that all people live. In the Pacific, we had the main uh, participants of the documentary come here into AUT, which was fantastic. When the project was finished, we were able to um, get Florent, the main participant, over here to New Zealand. Once it finished, it played at the New Zealand International Film Festival in 2014, and it played around the country. We were lucky enough to have it nominated for three New Zealand Film Awards last year, and now um, the next stage of the exhibition, distribution of the film is happening. Um, screenings in New Caledonia at um, Anuru Aporo Film Festival there, that's just happened. Tahiti um, FIFO Documentary Festival, that's coming up in uh, January um, 2016. So it's really great that the film can have another life. And I think it's, the, it's very important that we have organisations like the Pacific Media Centre around not just to fund because there, there's often not a lot of funding for Pacific projects but also to have um, uh, expertise and, and that idea of um, supporting work that's going out there and uh, engaging with some of the real issues that we're facing in the Pacific. The Pacific Journalism Review has just uh, recently celebrated 20 years of publication, which is quite an astounding achievement for a research journal, particularly in the Australasian region. This is the only journal that um, focuses on uh, Asia Pacific with a main emphasis on the Pacific uh, research, uh, and also it publishes New Zealand research as well, and Australian too, for that matter. Pacific Journalism Review is affiliated with the media centres. So it's, it's fantastic for me to know that the academic work that comes out of my documentary practice has an avenue. On the, 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 the PhD side, uh, we've had a number of uh, students that are working on the doctoral um, uh, research uh, and our first um, uh, PhD was last year with um, uh, Roxana Aslam. She developed and this was the first PhD in peace journalism in New Zealand, uh, so really breaking a, a boundary there. At the moment we have another one with uh, Tabranung Korova who's doing PhD research on Micronesia and climate change, uh, particularly the role of media and interaction between uh, politics, uh, the nexus between P political leaderships uh, and the media itself. The Pacific Media Centre has provided uh, quite an impetus into research in quite a range of areas in the media that probably were rather neglected in the past and so we're opening up new research pathways. But I just wanted to say that the news over the weekend is three, um, three organisers of a um, West Papua and flag raising ceremony in Port Moresby, the capital of uh, Papua New Guinea have been arrested. New Zealand is not a country by itself and it is part of a bigger Pacific community and it is our job as New Zealanders to also be aware of the problems that they face. What attracted me to the Pacific Media Centre is the fact that it gives a sort of strong voice for um, Asia Pacific issues Things that um, are normally sort of swept aside are not really given the airtime that they deserve. So we try, we try to reflect what we think is really needed in the region and that comes through our um, students' research. As an academic and as a filmmaker, the centre is, is, is a place where um, I can connect some of the theoretical stuff I do with some of the practical stuff. It's easy to get news, it's easy to find information that reports exactly what happened or who said what, but what's harder is to figure out why this is important to us and why this matters. We're at an exciting um, uh, you know, range of challenges at the moment uh, to take the next steps uh, forward and we're looking forward to working with all our partners in the region and uh, also giving an opportunity for our students to do some great things in the future.